All righty then. <laughs> Jim Carrey, anybody? <laughs> Hello, I'm Haya Shalom. If you've not been to my channel, um, welcome. So pretty much I'm a regular natural woman and I'm just like you. And I am not a lawyer, nor am I an accountant or working for the government or anything like that. Not any agent that I'm aware of. Um, but I'm here to read and to learn because whenever you want to seek truth, you might want to go to the source. And sometimes we have this disability by not knowing where do we go for answers? Like, what kind of answers are we looking for? Are we looking for spiritual answers? Are we looking for legal answers? Are we looking for lawful answers? What kind of answers are we looking for? So I do like to read the Bible. And I do know that if we are knocking or seeking or asking, eventually we will find. So this is what I do. I just go in my little woman cave here and get on my computer and try to research something that maybe somebody sent me or I've had on my computer for a while. And I, in the past, I've read some things in the Bible or something in the Apocrypha. I've also read some paperwork or PDFs that people have sent me. Sometimes I refer to other people's channels that know more than I do. I wish I knew everything. I wish I was the answer person. But I don't always know everything. I know some things. I'm over a half a century old. So I know some things, but I don't know everything. And because there's so much to know and so many new things popping up all the time, or maybe an edict or a new law that comes up that we have not exactly read about, um, we should read about these things so that we can know firsthand knowledge. So in my quest to do my own research, I've had to learn how to use my computer and how to search on the internet, just like everybody. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen and let's see how we can find something. First, you have to go down. If you're ever on a Zoom call and you ever want to do something like this, you kind of have to, um, let's see, let's look for some stuff here. Uh, well, what do we want to search for? Well, let's see. I'd like to look at public law 7310. Let's see if I have that. I have so many things on my deal here, but I don't know if I have that. No? Okay. So what I'm going to have to do, stop. Let me see. How do you do this? Pause share. Okay. Hang on a second. <clears throat> hmm. Uh... What do we want to do? Find their applications. Yeah, pretty much, you know, having to know how to find stuff in the first place is the, the thing. Let's go to file. We're going to do a new tab. We're going to try to look at... Hmm. The screen sharing is paused. Okay, cool. Stop share. Okay. Yeah. Like I said, I don't know everything. But okay, so that's what you have to do. You got to go on a Safari browser. Then you can put in your public law 7310. That's the one right there that we really want to focus on today. Because that talks about that HJR House Joint Resolution 192. So let's see. Oh, let's go to govinfo.gov. Well, wait a minute. Hang on. I want to make sure we go to public law 73. Yeah, that's the one. Mm -hmm. Okay. So let's do that. Um, 
Let me share my screen so you can kind of see what I'm doing here. Let's see, share screen. Okay. We don't want to look at my Zoom stuff. We don't want to look at my stuff on my... Okay, here we go. Public Law 73. Do you see this? Can you see this, you guys? Okay. I don't have anybody on my Zoom. It's just me. <laughs> but I can pretend. I know that people sometimes have things to do, especially on a Friday night. Some people view it as the Sabbath, so... Some people spend time doing other things, you know, worshiping the creator, resting, um, spending time with their family, doing study. Well, we also need to understand that we are in a war. You know, the Bible talks about that we don't wrestle with flesh and blood. But we're wrestling with principalities and powers, rulers of darkness, spiritual wickedness in high places. And when it comes to these laws that are in the system, um, you know, the beast system, that's some spiritual stuff right there. Because those things are made by the legislators, which are usually lawyers, Congress, the Senate, and it affects the people. So in a way, I'm kind of a political sociologist. When things happen poli politician-wise, like legislation, it does affect you and I down here. That trickle-down effect, it affects us. So we need to know what these people are doing. And the way to do that is to look at their own laws that they have sworn to follow and they're in the system because they, right here, being enacted by the Senate and House of Representatives of the United States of America in Congress assembled. So this Title I here is about the Treasury Department. Now, I kind of wanted to go to the Public Law 7310. So let me skim down. Hey, it's working. I don't hear a train. I don't hear dogs barking. I don't hear neighbors out there. I don't hear coyotes. This is working. Here's Public Law 73. This is done in June 18, 1953. So I'm still scrolling down because I'm kind of looking for that Public Law 7310. I'm going to keep scrolling here. But you can kind of skim as you see salaries and expenses. Bureau of the Mint, Public Law 73. Hey, there's the Coast Guard operating expenses. So let me get, on, get over here on the side and see if I can go a little faster. <clears throat> I'm looking for 73-10. Retired pay. Hmm. Title II, General Administration, Postal Operations. Now, that's something about the Post Office Department. Claims, hey, hey. Oh, for damages, yeah. General Provisions. All right, I see Public Law 74. I'm looking at Title Three, so... Am I to assume that we got to go way down? I don't know. Let me see. Let's see what's going on. Eh. This is the bad thing. When you get to the bottom of your rope and, there, and you, I don't see it. I really want to look at 7310. So, not seeing it. Okay. This is on info.gov, info.gov. So, let me just go back a second. I didn't see it. I'm looking for 7310. Here we go. Public Law 7310. Now it says paragraph 48, but I don't know. Uh, here, this is the one we want to look at right here. But that's Facebook. Uh, I want to go SATCOM. Hey, isn't that, um, what's his name? Eon. U.S. Law Inc. 7310. 
Let's go on with Eon. I think that's Eon. I think Setcom is Eon, isn't it? Let's see what he has to say. Hey, there we go. To assure uniform value to the coins and currencies of the United States, whereas the holding of or dealing in gold affect public interest and are therefore subject to proper regulation and restriction, and whereas the existing emergency, what existing emergency? has disclosed the provisions of obligations which purport to give the obligee a right to require payment in gold or a particular kind of coin or currency of the United States or in an amount in money of the United States measured thereby obstruct the power of Congress to regulate the value of the money of the United Dollar, oh, in United States, excuse me, and are inconsistent with the declared policy of the Congress to maintain at all times the equal power of every dollar coined or issued by the United States in the markets and in the payment of debts. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Senate and House of Representatives the, of the United States of America in Congress assembled that A, every provision contained in or made with respect to any obligation which purports to give the obligee a right to require payments in gold or a particular kind of coin or currency or in an amount in money of the United States measured thereby is declared to be against public policy. Wow. And no such provision shall be contained in or made with respect to any obligation hereafter. Huh? Hereafter incurred. Every obligation heretofore or hereafter incurred, whether or not any such provision is contained therein or made with respect thereto, shall be discharged upon payment dollar for dollar in any coin or currency, which at time of payment is legal tender for public and private debts. Any such provision contained in any law authorizing obligations to be issued by or under authority of the United States is hereby repealed. But the repeal of any such provision shall not invalidate any other provision or authority contained in such law. Well, we know that the Federal Reserve notes, those green greenbacks or those green monies that we've been getting called cash they're not equal to a dollar of gold right so something here got repealed is it that is it the fact that it's not dollar for dollar is that the part that got repealed uh oh here's some dogs so b let me just shut this because otherwise you know those yapping dogs next door <laughs> excuse me all right that's probably better so let's see <clears throat> hang on just a quick second as used in this resolution the term obligation means any obligation including every obligation of and to the united states except currency payable in money of the united states and the term coin or currency means coin <clears throat> excuse me, or currency of the United States, including Federal Reserve notes and circulating notes of Federal Reserve banks and national banking associations. Okay. I need to, I need to stop for just a second. All right. I actually needed to get something to drink. It's kind of dry. This weather's a little dry. When I'm reading, my my throat gets a little dry and I start coughing. <clears throat> okay, so we're up here. As used in this resolution, the term obligation means any obligation, including every obligation of and to the United States, accepting currency payable in money of the United States. And the term coin or currency means coin or currency of the United States, 
including Federal Reserve notes, and circulating notes of Federal Reserve banks and national banking associations. Section 2, <clears throat> the last sentence of paragraph 1 of subsection B of section 43 of the act entitled an act to relieve the existing national economic emergency by increasing agricultural purchasing power to raise revenue for extraordinary expenses incurred by reason of such emergency to provide emergency relief with respect to agricultural indebtedness to provide for the orderly liquidation of joint stock land banks and of other purposes approved May 12, 1933, is amended to read as follows. All coins and currencies of the United States, including Federal Reserve notes and circulating notes of the Federal Reserve banks and national banking associations, heretofore and hereafter coined or issued shall be legal tender for all debts, public and private, public charges, taxes, duties, and dues, except that gold coins, when below the standard weight and limit of tolerance provided by law for the single piece, shall be legal tender only at valuation in proportion to their actual weight. <clears throat> so, um, this was in 1933. 31 USCA 462-463. It says House Joint Resolution 192, 73rd Congress, Session 1, Chapter 48, June 5th, 1933, Public Law Number 10. Uh, when I just read it just now, to me, it looked like it was saying that we we're going to be using the Federal Reserve notes. And is that what it said to you guys? Because that's what it looked like to me. And that, you know, when you look at your dollars, it says, for all debts, public and private. <clears throat> um, I'm just wondering. Um, let's read some more of something different. Let me see. Because that's what that looks like it says to me. Uh, oh, that was from Setcom. Let's look up this public law 7310, uslaw.link. Let's see what that says. Oh, no. Karma wants to go out. An act to relieve the existing national economic emergency by increasing agricultural purchasing power to raise revenue for extraordinary expenses incurred by reason of such emergency to provide emergency relief with respect to agricultural indebtedness to provide for the orderly liquidation of joint stock land banks and for other purposes. Huh. Well, that's kind of interesting. <clears throat> so way back when, in 1933, they were kind of making it look like it was uh, an economic emergency. Let's see what happened. 1933, so that's after the Great Depression in the 20s, right? So they're trying to make it so that they can liquidate the joint stocks. Um, is that kind of how they snuck in there? Let me see. What else do we have? Let's do some more and see what else. <clears throat> then there's, um, uh, what is this? We the people, shareholders. Oh, you know what? That's from, what's his name? Yeah, yeah, Karma, I know. She wants to go out there because there's probably a rat. We the People Shareholders, isn't that, um, what's his name? Patrick Devine. All right, let me just see what this says. Public Policy, HJR 192. Joint Resolution to Suspend the Gold Standard and Abrogate the Gold Clause. June 5th, 1933. HJ Resolution 192, Southern Congress, First Session. <clears throat> excuse me, joint resolution to assure uniform value to the coins and currencies of the United States. Whereas the holding of or dealing in gold affects the public interest and therefore subject to proper regulation and restriction, and whereas the existing 
emergency has disclosed that provisions of obligations which purport to give the obligee a right to require payment are, am I sharing this particular screen? You are screen sharing. Okay, good. Just want to make sure. Obstruct the power of the Congress. Let me just stop it for a second because sometimes um, I'm not sharing when I want to share and I just want to double check and make sure I'm sharing. All right, so whereas the existing emergency has disclosed that provisions of obligations which purport to give the obligee a right to require payment in gold or a particular kind of coin or currency of the United States or in an amount of money <clears throat> of the United States measured thereby obstruct the power of the Congress to regulate the value of money of the United States. Mm and are inconsistent with the declared policy of the Congress to maintain at all times the equal power of every dollar, coin or issued by the United States in the markets and in the payment of debts. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Senate and House of Representatives of the United States of America in Congress assembled that A, every provision contained in or made with respect to any obligation which purports to give the obligee a right to require payment in gold or a particular kind of coin or currency or in an amount in money of the United States measured thereby is declared to be against public policy. <clears throat> oh, okay. Oh. Uh -huh. It is declared to be against public policy, and no such provision shall be contained in or made with respect to any obligation hereafter incurred. Every obligation, that would be every obligation heretofore or hereafter incurred, whether or not any such provision is contained therein or made with respect thereto, shall be discharged upon payment. Dollar for dollar. <clears throat> In any such coin or currency, which at the time of payment is legal tender for public and private debts. Well, as far as I've seen the, those dollars that we are using cash, uh, it says legal tender for public and private debts. So if we take that money and give it to the Edison bill, isn't that discharged dollar for dollar? I don't know. I'm not seeing it, folks. What does this mean? I mean, I could see right up here something about a right to require payment in gold or, or a particular kind of coin or currency, which I'm assuming is the cash, or in an amount in money of the United States measured thereby is declared to be against public policy. <clears throat> and I'm rereading it because I want to make sure I understand this. And no such provision shall be contained in or made with respect to any obligation hereafter incurred. Every obligation heretofore or hereafter incurred, whether or not any such provision is contained therein, or made with respect thereto shall be discharged upon payment dollar for dollar in any such coin or currency which at the time of payment is legal tender for public and private debts. Any such provision contained in any law authorizing obligations to be issued by or under authority of the United States is hereby repealed. <clears throat> But the repeal of any such provision shall not invalidate any other provision or authority contained in such law. B. As used in this resolution, the term obligation means an obligation including every obligation of and to the United States, accepting currency, payable in money of the United States 
And the term coin or currency means coin or currency of the United States, including Federal Reserve notes and circulating notes of Federal Reserve banks and national banking associations. And that looks like it's saying to me that cash is money. <clears throat> That's what that looks like it says to me. I don't know. What do you guys think? Write down in the comments. Section two, the last sentence of paragraph one of subsection B of section 43 of the act entitled an act to relieve the existing national economic emergency by increasing agricultural purchasing power to raise revenue for extraordinary expenses incurred by reason of such emergency to provide emergency relief with respect to agricultural indebtedness to provide for the orderly liquidation of joint stock land banks and for other purposes approved May 12th, 1933 is amended to read as follows. All coins and currencies of the United States, including Federal Reserve notes and circulating notes of Federal Reserve banks and national banking associations, heretofore or hereafter coined or issued shall be legal tender for all debts. That makes sense. For public and private, public charges, taxes, duties, and dues. Except that gold coins, when below the standard weight and limit of tolerance provided by law for the single piece shall be legal tender, only at valuation in proportion to their actual weight. Okay. Well, what I read here, it looks to me like it was saying that the green money is considered money. And they, they were saying, except that the gold coins, when they're below the standard weight and limit of their tolerance, it wasn't necessarily saying, I mean, when I'm reading it, it looks to me like it says that the Federal Reserve notes is used to discharge debt. That's, I mean, you know, that's what I'm reading. <laughs> I didn't notice anything for it to say that there is no money. They're saying right here, including Federal Reserve notes and circulating notes of Federal Reserve Banks and National Banking Associations, heretofore and hereafter coined or issued shall be legal tender for all debts, for public and private, public charges, taxes, duties, and dues, except that gold coins, you know, when they're not up to par on the weight limit. <clears throat> so I'm just saying... Um, they're kind of saying right there, looks like it's money. So when people say that there's no money, they're said it right there in the public law 7310 that the Federal Reserve notes is considered money. I'm just saying, but I don't, I don't know. I kind of heard the total opposite this whole time. All right, let's see what else is there that we can read. Mm, there's another public law. What was it? <clears throat> Let me see. You know when you go like on TikTok or something? You can take snapshots of things that you can look at later, you know? Let me look to see. There was this guy, Ignorance No More, on TikTok. He was going over the remittance transfers, 15 U.S. Code 16930-1 for remittance transfer. Now, he was talking about Public Law 106-229. Let me look up that. Public Law. Okay. Let's see. Public Law. What was that again? 106, 106-229. All right, let's see what that says. Because I'm a little confused after reading what I just read. 
kind of looked like it said to me that the green stuff, Federal Reserve knows is money. <clears throat> okay. Well, electronic signatures in global and national something rather. What was he saying about this? That uh, everything's prepaid. So let me look. What would it be under PDF? Let's look at a PDF and see what that says. Public Law 106229. Electronic Signatures and Global and National Commerce Act. <clears throat> Excuse me for this. Clearing of my throat thing. I just got over a cold. Or a flu, actually. <clears throat> All right, so now. This is an act to facilitate the use of electronic records and signatures in interstate or foreign commerce. Okay. Uh, 15 U.S.C. 7001. Talking about contracts. In general, notwithstanding any statute, regulation, or other rule of law, other than this title and Title II, with respect to any transaction in or affecting interstate or foreign commerce. A signature, contract, or other record relating to such transaction may not be denied legal effect, validity, or enforceability solely because it is in electronic form. And a contract relating to such transaction may not be denied legal effect, validity, or enforceability solely because an electronic signature or electronic record was used in its formation. So preservation of rights and obligation. This title does not, number one, limit, alter, or otherwise affect any requirement imposed by a statute, regulation, or rule of law relating to the rights and obligations of persons under such statute, regulation, or rule of law other than a requirement that contracts or other records be written, signed, or in non-electric form, or two, require any person to agree to use or accept electronic records or electronic signatures other than governmental agency with respect to a record other than a contract to which it is a party. Consumer disclosures. Number one, consent to electronic records, notwithstanding subsection A, if a statute regulation or other rule of law requires that information relating to a transaction or transactions in or affecting interstate or foreign commerce be provided or made available to a consumer in writing, the use of an electronic record to provide or make available whichever is required, such information satisfies the requirement that such information be in writing if A, the consumer has affirmatively consented to such use and has not withdrawn such consent, B, the consumer prior to consenting is provided with a clear and conspicuous statement, I, informing the, the cus consumer of I, any right, <clears throat> oh, one, any right or option of the consumer to have the record provided or made available on paper or in non-electric form, and two, the right of the consumer to withdraw karma. Hey, calm down. She wants to go outside and chase rats. To withdraw the consent to have the record provided or made available in an electronic form and any conditions, consequences, which may include termination of the party's relationship or fees in the event of such withdrawal. Uh, so far, I haven't seen anything that all debts are prepaid. I haven't seen that, but uh, we're talking about electronic stuff right here. So informing the consumer of whether the consent applies only to the particular transaction, which gave rise to the obligation to provide the record, or two, to identified categories of records that may be provided or made available during the course of the party's relationship. Three, describing the procedures the consumer must use to withdraw consent as provided in clause I, and to update information needed to contact the consumer electronically, and four, informing the consumer, one, 
how after the consent the consumer may upon request obtain a paper copy of an electronic record and two whether any fee will be charged for such a copy c the consumer <clears throat> is this one or i it looks like it's i but i think it's one because the next one's two prior to consenting is provided with a statement of the hardware and software requirements for access to and retention of the electronic records and two consents electronically or confirms his or her consent electronically in a manner that reasonably demonstrates that the consumer can access information in the electronic form that will be used to provide the information that is the subject of the consent and d after the consent of a consumer in accordance with subparagraph a if a change in the hardware or software requirement needed to access or retain electronic records creates a material risk that the consumer will not be able to access or retain a subsequent electronic record that was the subject of the consent. The person providing the electronic record, one, <clears throat> provides the consumer with a statement of, one, the revised hardware and software requirement for access to retention of the electronic records, and two, the right to withdraw consent without the imposition of any fees for such withdrawal and without the imposition of any condition and consequence that was not disclosed under subparagraph B, I, or 1, and 2, again complies with subparagraph C, 2, other rights, preservation of consumer protections. I'm hoping that we're going to get to what we want to see right here. Nothing in this title affects the content or timing of any disclosure or other record required to be provided or made available to any consumer under any statute, regulation, or other rule of law. B, verification or acknowledgement. If a law that was enacted prior to this act expressly requires a record to be provided or made available by a specific method that requires verification or acknowledgement of receipt, the record may be provided or made available electronically only if the method used provides verification or acknowledgement of receipt, whichever is required. Three, effect of failure to obtain electronic consent or confirmation of consent. Oh my gosh. So, so far, this is all about electronic stuff. I want to get to the good stuff, like where the heck and prior consent or communications. Come on. Uh, ignorance no more. Where is it that says in this thing right here that all debts are prepaid? That's what I'm looking for. And I'm not finding it so far. So I'm skipping down because I'm not finding it. Because it keeps going on and on saying the same thing over and over. Checks. If a statute, regulation, or other rule of law requires the retention of a check, that requirement is satisfied by retention of an electronic record of the information on the front and back of the check in accordance with paragraph 1, E, accuracy and ability to retain contracts and other records, notwithstanding subsection A, if a statute, regulation, or other rule of law requires that a contract or other record relating to a transaction in or affecting interstate or foreign commerce be in writing, the legal effect, validity, or enforceability of an electronic record of such contract or other record may be denied if such electronic record is not in a form that is capable of being retained or accurately reproduced for later reference by all parties of persons who are entitled to retain the contract or other record. Okay. I'm reading really fast. I know that. Because I'm really wanting to get to the, the whole reason why Ignorance No More had said that this particular 106229 said something about uh, all payments are prepaid. Hang on. I'm going to let my dog out for a little bit because she's just going to keep whining. And then when she goes out, she's going to be barking. Turn up to bark, okay? Just go kill those things, all right? Don't be barking. <clears throat> okay. So I can hear in the background whining and all that jazz. I can't handle it. Oh my God. 
Now she's out there screaming bloody murder. <laughs> I'm going to have to stop. Okay, so far, I'm really not seeing where it says that everything is prepaid. What up? Electronic agents, insurance. Okay. I don't know. Insurance agents and brokers. I am not seeing what he said here. I'm going to have to text him. Say, where exactly? Public Law 106-229, does it say that all things are prepaid? Because I'm not seeing it. Do you guys see it here? Yeah, I'm going to have to go out there because my child, my furry child is <clears throat> going to cause havoc if I don't get out there. But I'm not seeing it, you guys. No. I mean, I can keep reading and reading. It's so boring and droning on. But I am not seeing where it says that all debts are prepaid. Where is that? Do you guys see it? I don't see it. Just saying. So, so far, stuck out on the first one, stuck out on the second one. Eh. I am not seeing what these people are seeing. Is it that they just maybe don't comprehend what they're reading? And they misconstrue it and they're wrong? Or am I not reading? I mean, I think I'm a pretty good reader as far as comprehension when I don't have all these distractions. Uh, I might have to read this again. Or maybe I just listen to myself read it. But I am not seeing anything where it says that all debts are prepaid on this thing. Continuing Obligation Under Government Paperwork Elimination Act. <clears throat> Prospectuses. Ooh. Within 30 days after the date of enactment of this act, the Securities and Exchange Commission shall issue regulation in order pursuant to paragraph 1 exempting from section... Oh, oh. Yeah, I'm hearing my child outside. I gotta go. Well, I don't know. If you guys want to go ahead and read all these things, it's boring. It's really boring, and I don't get it. Like, two fails. Boop. No, I, I don't see what you guys are seeing. Definitions. Consumer. Right. Products or services, which are used primarily for the personal, family, household, yeah. Legal represent, yeah, I gotta, I gotta stop. You know why? My dog is out there. And she's screaming bloody murder. Well, I'm gonna go ahead and pause for a little bit. Okay, sorry about that. My dog was just screaming bloody murder out there. She hears little rats and she smells them. She goes under the trailer and I think they get inside the trailer and well, anyways, let me go back to sharing the screen here and see if I can find where it says that all debts are prepaid. I'm not seeing it. See the definitions, federal uh, person, an individual, corporation, business, trust, estate, trust, partnership. Yeah, that's pretty much. Record. The term record means information that is inscribed on a tangible medium or that's stored in electronic or other medium. Requirement includes prohibition, self-regulatory organization. The term self-regulatory organization means an organization or entity that is not a federal regulatory agency or state, but that is under the supervision of the federal regulatory agency and is authorized under federal law to adopt and administer rules applicable to its members, hey, <laughs> members, whoa, that are enforced by such organization or entity by a federal regulatory agency, so, or by another self-regulatory organization. So I'm not, I'm not a federal agent. I don't work for the federal government. I don't need to get any federal shots or to be regulated because I'm not. I'm not an employee of the state. Let's see, state. The term state includes the District of Columbia and the territories and possessions 
of the United States. I don't work for Washington, D.C. Transaction. The term transaction means an action or set of actions relating to the conduct of business, consumer, or commercial affairs between two or more persons, including any of the following types of conduct. You can hear my dog. Oh, man. I don't want my neighbors to get upset. Well, I might have to just abort this for right now. Because I know I'm not going to be able to get her right away. Darn it. <laughs> 